Life was never easy in Donbass. At least it was familiar. Now the war is getting closer to their care home. And it's time to go. These women have no families to support them. One of the Ukrainian volunteers said the Russian soldiers are worse than animals. We can't leave these women behind. They're taking them west, out of Donbass, away from the Russian advance. A Russian strike did this close by in Bakhmut. Most of the residents had evacuated by the time it was hit last week. The man who lived in this flat left the day before. Civilians here fear the Russians will take all of Donbass, including their town. Roman and Marina want to stay, but it's getting lonely, with the destructive power of the Russian army on their doorstep. So far, we made that decision, but if it gets too bad, then I don't know. We want to stay here, we want peace, we want our child to go to school here normally, we will rebuild the city. Sonia, their daughter, turned eight this month. Her school closed when the Russians invaded. Online lessons are part of a wall of normality her parents are trying to build around her. It's looking very fragile. Just down the road is a glimpse of the future they dread. The Russians are around five miles away. They're hitting Bakhmut regularly, but not constantly yet. Doggedly, civilians clutch at routine as their old lives disappear. The town waits on big decisions. For the few civilians left about leaving or staying, how to survive, but also for the Ukrainian army. Some powerful American-made howitzers have just arrived, but not enough to stop the Russian advance into Severodonetsk. Ukraine's generals must decide how many more troops to sacrifice in what could be a losing battle for this part of Donbass. A fighting retreat to more defensible positions looks likely if the Russian offensive doesn't stall. New trench networks well back from the existing front line are ready. Kramatorsk, one of the Donbass towns that must be on the Russian target list, is about 15 minutes drive that way. The rest of Ukraine is there. This might all simply be just in case a contingency plan, but if the Russians do blast their way through, they're going to need it. Maxim Lutsik's unit was ordered to retreat closer to Bakhmut after weeks of heavy fighting. He's one of thousands of Ukrainian volunteers. All the aircraft bombing. Like. Mm -hmm. Back in Kyiv, just after the invasion, he signed up with his friend Dmitry. Uh, I am studying economy and I'm studying biology. The two students fought in the victory in Kyiv. Dimitro's still there. Ukrainians have to put aside the deliverance they felt then. In Donbass, Maxim, 19 years old, is in an attritional struggle. We were defending the uh, Zara chemical factory. <clears throat> I think that uh, there is uh, no way uh, to to make a deal with Putin. Putin understands, the, uh, understands only the language of bullets, blood, uh, war crimes. Air raid sirens were sounding as they prepared to bury Sergei Verpeka, a 21-year-old Ukrainian soldier. Since the invasion, this war has had terrible consequences and not just in Ukraine. Sergei Verpeka and thousands more Ukrainians and Russians are dead. 
The killing here has brought the big nuclear armed powers closer to confrontation than since the height of the Cold War. Millions are refugees. A wider war is a clear risk. More destruction, hunger, poverty, and more funerals are a certainty. War is the bringer of grief and change. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, Donbass.